This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Mustang. Hey, let's get our HD Nation on. Last week, I posted a link on my Google Plus page that directed folks to an online color challenge presented by the color experts at X-Rite. I uh, asked the folks to take the color test and report their results, and it turned out that many of us have some deficiencies in our color vision. Uh, I noticed that when my eyes are tired, my ability to discriminate between similar shades of green starts to diminish. But when I'm well rested, well first, let me show you that Twitter post I actually threw out there really quick. Posted this out there, and then I went ahead and posted it on my Google Plus page, and the test itself looks a little bit like this. And what you're doing is essentially rearranging these squares so that the hues transition smoothly from one color to the next. And once you go through all four of these, Da, da, da. You click the score test button down here. You could have score really low right now. <laughs> well, that would be horrible, actually, if I did that. Well, if I did this, it, it should be a, quite a high number in terms of errors. I'm a, yes, you do not want that. You essentially want everything to go nice and flat on there. Uh, zero being the ideal score. Uh, I had a lot of people respond. Uh, a lot of people had good scores. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm able to pull off the perfect score in the mornings and the afternoons. But as I said, toward the evening, I found my uh, eyes when my eyes are tired, I have problems discriminating green, at least according to this test. So uh, I will say that. Before you do that, though, I, uh, besides being well rested, I recommend you check your monitor's picture settings before trying any, anything, uh, any test like this. Uh, I've often recommended this website, uh, flatpanels.dk. It's actually a, a wonderful website. And on this page, if you go up to the top and it brings down this menu, click on multiple here, and this brings up this wonderful color chart that makes it really easy to do some quick uh, checks. One, basically getting your color temperature to somewhat neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a neutral setting on your monitor, look for something maybe called 6500K. Uh, that would be good. And take a look at the grayscale chart, especially when making changes to color temperature. You want one that's neutral, not too blue, not too red. Also, turn down your contrast until those shades of white, especially the peak shades of white, are all visible. Uh, brightness on PC monitors, that's usually just a brightness, uh, brightness control for the backlight system. Uh, just reduce it to eye comfortable levels. If you do actually have a black level control, take a look at the darkest shades of gray, set it as low as possible while retaining the lowest percentages still being visible. Uh, and at least this applies to when you're viewing this picture or this test pattern in a darkroom environment. Uh, the next step would be to fine tune grayscale and color output, but that requires some pretty specialized hardware and software that I've talked about before. However, uh, OS X and Windows provide a visual method for optimizing grayscale and gamma that some of you may want to investigate. And Tests like these, I, I believe it's useful to know your sensory limitations, be it vision or hearing, especially for anyone who depends on some of their primary senses for a living. Mm -hmm. and, and please, if you have never visited an ophthalmologist, I, I urge you and everyone to please make an appointment for a complete checkup. Uh, and if you are ever, ever struck in the eye, hopefully accidentally, have that eye examined as soon as possible, particularly for retina damage. Now. Let me know how you scored on this X-Ray <laughs> color challenge. Uh, post the results in our forums on Facebook, email, Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Really cool. would. Yeah. I just had to throw out my Did my you yearly... have recent like, retinal separation damage? Or was... Yeah, I've had that happen twice in my life. Really? Yeah, that's a, that's a bad thing to have happen. And the quicker you catch it, the better it is. <laughs> For, yeah. It's expensive outpatient surgery, and it's, and it's really graphic. And if you really want to know what it is I went through... <laughs> Google um, it. I have some pictures that are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can Google the word vitrectomy. That's a that'll that'll shock you for the day. <laughs> uh, avoid my keyboard. Membraneectomy. <laughs> First email comes from Brian, who writes in Texilla Crew. I have a friend that has a Vizio LCD that has a horizontal line that runs across the entire screen, a couple inches from the top of the display. At first, the line was intermittent and would only show up every so often, but for the last week or so, it has been constant. Is there anything that can be done to get this good to go away, or is he simply out of luck? Love the show. Thanks, Brian. And dun, 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 dun. We have a picture. We do, actually. This is something I've seen before. Actually, it's a few times. It's really frustrating. As I'm slowly loading the picture here. Here is the top of the picture screen. Actually, you can barely make out, as soon as my cursor comes back here, there's a line going across the screen right there. It might be a little difficult to see. It's not part of the Fox logo for the baseball game? Yep, no, <laughs> unfortunately. And it's not a sign of burn-in or anything like that. What this appears to be would be that one or more of the numerous electrical connections between the LCD panel itself and the integrated circuit board that drives the panel has failed. Uh, this is basically producing this 
line that goes across the screen, a darkened line that goes across the entire picture. The good news is that, as you are already aware, the rest of the screen continues to function normally. And if you sit far enough away from the screen, a single row of black pixels, it's pretty hard to see that, really. Uh, I mean, Recently, though, I had to inform a client that their LCD had a similar row of darkened pixels. They had never noticed it, actually, from their typical viewing distances. So keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world, but if I know... If you have a big living room or a big viewing room, Sit further away. Uh, possible <laughs> causes for something like this. Uh, was the display ever dropped? Ooh. That's usually number one. Uh, was it ever transported or carried on the front or the back of the display that would have caused some flexing yeah. in the panel? That's also Do really... Do not transport your HDTV no. like this. No. Transport it like this. This is the way it's designed to support wake and take shock. If you put it so the screen is pointing towards the ground or towards the sky, you are begging for problems. <laughs> Indeed. Or, you know, this is possible too. It may have been a minor manufacturing defect that manifests itself after a few hundred power cycles. Basically, warming and cooling the display finally caused the weak point to fail. What do you do? Well, how old is that TV? Uh, right. Do you have any warranty options left? To use those if you possibly can. I, I don't understand people's reluctance to actually contact for warranty <laughs> service on a product they've purchased. Do it if it's still available. Right. Or donate that TV to charity. Somebody would love that. Or make it the kid's TV. And as I said, you can always sit further away. And if there are any <laughs> suggestions that you may have for a person with a black, darkened line running through their TV, do let us know. You know where to contact us. Head up the website, techzilla.com. This next email comes from Chris, who wrote in, Dear Texilla crew, I'm trying to split my coax cable connection to my modem and my TV. At first, everything seems to be working fine, but after a while, my internet connection drops. The signal is there because it works for a little while, so can I use an amplifier or maybe a better quality splitter to make this work? If so, what kind of splitter do I need? If an amp is required, does it have to be a certain strength so as to not break my modem? I've tried scouring the internets and reading forums, but nobody seems to have an answer. I'm no electrician, so help would be greatly appreciated. Chris from NKY. I'm assuming it's northern Kentucky, but I could be wrong. That makes sense. I'll, I'll leave it there. That's a, the acronym I'll look for NKY. <laughs> uh, there are a few things, Chris, that could interrupt your cable internet connection. I am assuming you have already checked the basics. Uh, everything's plugged in and all connections are well seated and tightened down. Mm -hmm. Also, there's no obvious damage to any of the coax cables or splitters that you're currently using. Then, Try connecting the cable modem directly to the wall without the splitter. Leave the TV out of the loop. If everything's working, then it's likely the splitter or one of the other pieces of coax in the loop are the issue. You could say that. The next step I would take would be to contact your cable provider and explain to them that you're experiencing an intermittent failure with your service. Uh, the provider will probably have you double check everything again, including cycling the power on the modem and the router. <laughs> explain that you've tried all of that and that you believe it may be a bad piece of coax and that you would like to schedule a technician to come out and check it out. Once we're sure all the physical cables, connections, and splitters are all okay, then it's time to start narrowing down the list of potential suspects. I had this same issue actually at home <laughs> with my cable service provider where my connection would fail at least once a day. They replaced the technicians that came out, replaced all my coax and splitters. They even suggested, oh, my, my one splitter I was using was a bad one, and they right. replaced it with a better one. I have no idea what it was. They did replace all my wiring, though, within the house, which is great. Well, it's kind of funny. You, somebody deals with these splitters every day, and they keep replacing that particular brand of splitters, yeah. kind of like Bosch spark plugs. They tell people, <laughs> don't use this, this splitter. It and is I, bad. Totally. And that's yeah. what I ended up doing. Uh, I ended up then staggering out swaps of the gear I was using, specifically the router and the modem. Swapped out the router. My internet speed went up. Dun, dun, I had dun. an old router in use. And when I swapped out my cable modem, it turned out my intermittent service going away every day would right. stop happening as well. So it turned out that re by replacing both those, I ended up taking care of the whole problem. But right. it turned out really it was my modem. You can also, you're renting that modem probably, take it back to the cable provider and have them give you another one. Try that first. Or, or buy your own personal modem. That's what I ended up doing. Yeah, because at one point it was like six bucks a month to rent a modem. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> Think about it. If you're using your cable service for a couple of years, that six bucks a month adds up. And it might be worth it just to go buy your cable modem yourself. Own it! Own right. a brand new one that nobody else has messed with. <laughs> Next email is from Devin, who had a suggestion for a viewer a while back who wanted just an HCTV with no features, no frills, no nothing, just a screen. Devin writes in, hey guys, I recently worked for an AV systems integrator and we sold a boatload of Panasonic professional displays. It's hard to call these HCTVs because they are just HD panels. No tuner, no speakers, no Wi-Fi, no apps, no pedestal stand. Well, that's an optional accessory. To my eye, these are exceptional panels. 
and the video editors we sold them to enjoyed them as well. Don't be fooled, just because these are professional panels don't mean you need to pay five grand or more for them. Their 50-inch 1080p model can be had for about 1500 Thanks, guys. Love the show. Devin from California. Terrific suggestion, Devin. And I wonder if the panel's warranty is affected by installation or use in a non-commercial environment. Probably not, yeah. but that's something I'd want to know before swiping the card on a commercial version of Panasonic's Pro Plasmas. These Pro Plasmas, too, uh, 42 inches to 103 inches available today if you've got the cash, if you have to ask how much a 103 inch plasma is, or how much it, it weighs, or how you would get that into your house, or let alone connect it to your power service. Well, <laughs> just, just you're spending six figures, let me put it that way. Uh, let's see, all of the Pro TVs that Panasonic offers, uh, one interesting thing about it is that all the accessories are optional. You're not buying anything but the panel itself. That means the stand, speakers, additional input options, 3D glasses, the 3D emitter, that's all separate. So All the stuff I don't need isn't in the box. That's exactly. Good. You buy what you need and you don't buy what you don't. Uh, that, going back to that 103 inch plasma, again, it, that's crazy. I'm not, it, what kind of power would it take to drive a panel like that? I'm thinking. It should list it. 12, 1300 specs. watts. Now it always says to be announced. They never talk about. Well, 12, 1300 watts is like 10 amps. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's eh, a hair dryer. Maybe. I was always wondering, would a typical house circuit be able to handle it? But uh, Depends on the house circuit. It's also the weight and the size of the panel. I mean, it's literally, you either need industrial size buildings this or... This is an excuse for to get Sid, my electrician, on. <laughs> Sid wants to be on TV. Cut a hole in your roof and lower it in. <laughs> he just rewired my entire house. I've learned more about electricity and electrical fails than I really ever needed worrying me at night. Another, yeah. another quick thing about Panasonic's uh, professional plasmas too. They offer a terrific set of picture controls, so mm -hmm. if you really just, you don't want to have to dig into service menus, but you want to be able to control every aspect of the picture, including being able to access it either over a network or through a serial connection, mm -hmm. these TVs feature that. And if you really need some specialized inputs like BNC connectors or DVI, right. you can actually buy modules that go right into those Pro TVs too. So that's, that's another option to consider something like that. No Netflix built in though. No, nothing like that. But you have a very specialized display that can be used in a variety of environments. And it's, it's kind of cool. I kind of like that, that stripped down, just give me what I need approach to a, a TV. Don't forget to catch us on YouTube at youtube.com slash techhd or Twitter at techzilla, at Robert Heron, at Patrick Norton, and at Veronica. Aw, and it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Ford is back as a sponsor again today here on TechZilla. We've been having a good time driving the 2012 Mustang around town. It turns a head or two every time we're on the road. If you're not satisfied by the purr of the engine, check out the 500 watt shaker audio system in the 2012 Ford Mustang. Thanks again to Ford and the 2012 Mustang for sponsoring TechZilla today.